So it may seem like a widely accepted social norm, but it is in fact a very long week that can put an unnecessary strain on families and cause lasting physical and mental damage. But we're not talking about a carnival cruise today. We're asking the question, why do people work 40 hours a week? It's a question that's sure to get Chester's hate thumb snapping. So eight hours of labor, eight hours of recreation, eight hours of rest. The Welsh labor rights activist and mill owner Robert Owen, who coined that adorable phrase in 1817. At that time, it was common to work 70, 80 hours a week, and he was advocating for a 40-hour work week. Now, it took 123 years before the United States amended their Labor Standards Act in 1944, which is similar to the amount of time that passes at a middle school talent show. Yeah. The revised act reduced the work week to 40 hours and required overtime pay beyond that threshold. That loosely answers the question why 40 hours a week is a standard, but it's worth asking if 40 hours a week is optimal. Now, the reason I find Owen's statement adorable is the idea of eight hours of recreation being available after 16 hours of work and sleep. Perhaps it's plausible in a time when only one parent worked and you had servants to help around the house. They were slaves. But... I'm going to guess you have a 30 minute unpaid required lunch, 52.4 minutes commute, 30 minutes of making dinner, 18 minutes of dishes, and a completely arbitrary 37 minutes a day of housework. So maybe you consider dishes, mowing the lawn, folding laundry, general hygiene, taking the trash, leaf blowing, snow blowing, recreational activities, but I, sir, do not. And that's a brief list of recreation is just for dinks. I hear that kids add to your responsibilities. Sure, that smells like recreation. Well, I'm not knocking Robert Owen as he was way ahead of his time and he got the ball rolling. But let's play a little game we like to call Reframe Freeze Frame, where we look at the insane moments in history to help us reframe the passage of time. Now, we're going to go back to 1944 when the 40-hour work week was adopted in the U.S. Here's your reframe focused on women's rights issues since that time. I hope you go back and freeze frame that list because it's ridiculous. In the 1960s, a bank could refuse to issue a credit card to an unmarried woman. And even if she was married, her husband was required to co-sign. I don't believe an adult woman should be lumped into the same category as this idiot who needed his mom and dad to co-sign on a college apartment. Yeah. So as recently as 1970s, credit cards in many cases were issued with only a husband's signature. It wasn't until the Equal Credit Opportunity Act of 1974 that it became illegal to refuse a credit card to a woman based on her gender. Yeah, that's right. 47 years ago, in 1973, banks had a red ink rejection stamp for credit that said woman on it. Well, that part about the stamp isn't true, but it paints a more dramatic picture than the way most covert sexism and racism actually transpire. I'd like to think that outside of the deep woods of Mississippi, most people think their grandmas should have had the right to credit without a male cosigner. Thank God for Mississippi. Why bring this up? Well, because a lot has changed in 82 years, and things that were once social norms are now social nopes. Some companies are testing and challenging the social norm of the 40-hour work week. Microsoft found that implementing a four-day work week led to a 40% boost in productivity as part of the results of its work-life choice program. As part of the experiment, Microsoft's Japan subsidiary closed every Friday in August 2019, resulting in a nearly 40% higher productivity than in August 2018. To which former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer said, You gotta love that guy. During summer months, staff of the popular project management tool Basecamp get to work four days a week with a 32-hour work week. The summer months run from May 1st to August 31st, and their CEO Jason Freed says that I can probably count on one hand how many times we've had a meeting with more than four people. He also said that less people helps a meeting to move a lot faster. One can only imagine how efficient a meeting with 435 members of the House of Representatives can be. Currently, there isn't mass data to tell us that 40 hours a week is optimal or not, but in the future with the rise of automation, we can make a decision to cut jobs or cut hours. I say that we cut hours and challenge companies to create more efficient worker productivity. To me, the 40-hour work week was a step in the right direction in 1940, and now it's time to reevaluate this dated social norm. I'll catch you on my next video that covers why people wear ties. I'll see you in the next video.